So the first thing we'll talk about is uh, where you can get Paladin. And Paladin is uh, developed and published by a company called Sumeri. So if you go to sumeri.com and you follow this URL, you will get to this download page. Now it has a suggested uh, price of $25, and you're free to pay the $25, but um, I just set this to zero, and that's how much I paid for it. Okay, so that's the website for, for Paladin. Before we install Linux to VMware, we, we need VMware. So you're going to end up going to VMware.com, and they have a downloads page where you can download the, the VMware player right here. Um, and this one is actually free for non-commercial use. So that's the one you're looking for. Okay, so now I've got VMware up and running. And I'm going to create a new virtual machine. And as I've said before, we're going to be using ISOs. However, you can put these uh, ISOs onto a DVD and use, use them directly off of DVD. And I find that maybe that, that sometimes is really convenient because then you can take the DVD to another machine maybe, or maybe it doesn't take as much hard drive space. So there are reasons for not using ISOs. But we're going to go ahead and use ISOs for all these. Browse to them. Paladin. Okay. And this is Linux. And while it says Ubuntu, um, I mean, Paladin is a version of Ubuntu. So we're going to go ahead and say Paladin. And I already have some Paladin um, VM images on my disk, so I'm going to have to say Paladin new. You can't rename it something you've already saved a disk. So I'm going to say Paladin new. Now, we may be imaging USB disks as big as 16 gigs. So I'm going to come up here and say we're going to go to 30 gigs for the uh, disk size. And then that way we give, give ourselves a little bit of breathing room. Okay. And I always take the second option. Uh, leave that alone. And I always am going to customize the hardware so I will get a little bit more breathing space as far as uh, memory goes. Now my, my laptop, this is my dev box that I'm on. I've got 16 gigs, so it's not a big deal. My laptop only has 4 gigs, and so giving it 2 gigs actually turns out to be quite a bit. But I have found that that, that these, um, especially like Paladin when you're doing imaging and stuff, it really will, will slow down quite a bit if you don't um, give it enough memory. Um, you can do quite a few other things here too. Um, I never do anything really except um, change the memory size. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and hit finish. And that's really all there is to, to finishing the VMware uh, startup and setup. But now to actually run Paladin, you select it. And this dialog is just going to tell you that um, it found a lot of USB devices and you know it's going to hook them up. And then Paladin goes through and it, it boots up and does its machinations. It really does not take that long for this to boot up. There we go. Now one really annoying thing about this is you actually have to click here one time before it, yeah, and see how this thing comes up. So I always click in the middle of the desktop first before I try to do anything, otherwise that'll, that'll come up. So there are lots of tools that, that Paladin has. Paladin is intended for forensic investigation. So that's why we're going to use it in this class. You'll notice that autopsy is, is, is already built into it. And we'll use Autopsy just because it's free and open source. And uh, we can do a lot of the same things that we did with um, WinHex last semester. So we'll go ahead and use uh, Autopsy a lot for, for, for the exercises in this uh, class. Let me get to close all this out now. Okay. So there's the Paladin Toolbox, Quick Start Guide, which I've never looked at once in my life, Remote Services, Forensic Tools, 
there, there are quite a few forensics tools in here, and we are definitely going to uh, look at a lot of those. Um, the app menu is one place, though, where, where you will probably go quite a bit. Okay, so that's sort of the short tour of Paladin and, and how, to, how to install it, and next week we go into a lot more detail on using it. So we're also going to use straight Ubuntu, Ubuntu without the adornments of Paladin and Kali. And this is the um, download page. You can see the URL there. Um, you can just search for uh, download Ubuntu. Uh, here's the download button. When you press that, it gives you the ability to pay money, which you can do if you'd like. Um, I never do. I guess that means I'm cheap. Um, so here it comes. The ISO is, is downloading, and uh, it's a pretty big ISO. It takes takes quite a while to download. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop that since I've already got it. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a a new virtual machine for Ubuntu, and I'm going to use an ISO. This time I'll select Ubuntu. And here again, for this class and what we're doing, an ISO is, is the best and easiest option. It may not be for you, and feel free to, to do something else if you'd like to. Okay. So we have to personalize this. Linker, username, or linker, password. So that this is fine. This has the version number, so we, we can easily see what, what version, what build we're on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and up this to 30 gigs, and we're going to keep this option. And we're going to customize the hardware and give ourselves a little more breathing room as far as RAM goes. And we'll finish. And it really doesn't take that long to create the virtual machine. Okay, now it's going to go ahead and I'll run it. it. Tells you what USB devices. Okay, so now Ubuntu is coming up. Notice that with Paladin, it didn't require a password, and the reason is is that Paladin is specifically um, made for forensics investigations where you really don't need to protect any of your data. Um, Ubuntu, it, on the other hand, is is a real operating system that you might need to protect from people. Okay, so it's installed all the software, and it set itself up. It's going through all of its startup um, functions. Okay. So we log in. And here we have the Ubuntu desktop. Now this is a fully functioning operating system. We have a LibreOffice and um, all of its parts, and, and there's just a lot to this. This doesn't have the forensic stuff, though, that, that Kali and Paladin have, but we're still going to use it uh, this semester. Okay, so the last Linux distribution we're going to uh, use in this class is going to be Kali. And you can see here, kali.org slash downloads is where I am. And I downloaded this first one, the Kali Linux 64-bit. So um, that's all you need to do to, to get this. I don't even think they ask you for money. I think there's a there's a donate button, but um, I don't think that, like the other ones. I don't think they ask you for any money. Okay, so let's create a new virtual machine for Kali, 
and let's browse for its ISO. Linux, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and say Kali here, Kali new in case I have already have one. Next, and here I'm going to up this to 30 as we've done the others. Keep this option. And you, you got the drill. We can give ourselves a little extra memory. Finish. Okay, Kali. Just going to run it. Here it comes. Tell me about my um, USB devices. Enter and boot. And there is Kali. Notice Kali, similar to, to Paladin, we didn't have any kind of login. And here you have a fully functioning uh, operating system. Um, this is actually some of the um, apps that you have to work with. Okay, so that's it for installing all three of these distributions.